All right, gang, what we want to do now is we want to take a look at the computation of taxable income and how it differs from books. There's a couple of very, very common permanent items, and there's some very, very common temporary items that we want to remind you of before we actually do this problem together. So let's take a look and see how it's done. You'll notice that the income statement for gap purposes won't necessarily agree with the tax return. And of course, we have to fill out a Schedule M1 to explain those differences. So when rules for the U.S. GAAP differ from U.S. tax laws for an item of income or expense, we have this known as commonly called a book to tax difference. Permanent differences are items of income or expense that are recognized for financial purposes, books, but never recognized for tax or vice versa. These cause permanent differences between the financial accounting income and the taxable income. We will cover a few of the more common permanent differences on the following couple of slides. You'll notice this very first one that we're going to emphasize is meals and specifically the entertainment. So if it's an entertaining meal and any entertainment, financial, it's an expense. But for your tax return, the meal is 50% deductible and the entertainment, 100% not deductible. You wanna remember that. I'm sure that's one that they'd love to throw in and test your knowledge about. Penalties. Penalties are a financial expense but we're not gonna reward you and allow you a tax deduction. So they are non-deductible and they also wind up as an M1 adjustment. Lobbying and political expenses. They are permitted as an expense on your financials, but they are never tax deductible on the tax return. So once again, they will show up as an M1 adjustment. State and municipal bond interest income, it's income on the financial statements, but it's not taxable income. So that winds up on M1 as a permanent difference as well. The next category is temporary differences. They are items of income or expense that are recognized in one period for financial accounting, but in a different period for tax and vice versa. These cause timing differences between the recognition of the amount of a deduction, but in the long run, there is no difference they will even out and they'll net out. We will cover a few of these on the next couple of slides as well. Installment sales. On the financials, you would debit accounts receivable and credit revenue. It's immediately income, even though they're not gonna pay you until later. But on a tax return, you are electing to report the income only when you receive the money. So it's income later and it winds up also as an M1 adjustment. You'll notice here the example would be where we had an installment sale, 80,000 installment sale recognized for book purposes immediately. However, it's gonna be paid in two installments, one next year and one the following. So for tax purposes, we only recognize zero in year one. In year two, we recognize 40,000, the amount received. And then in year three, we recognize the other 40,000 when it's received. You'll note that for tax, over the long haul, we did recognize the 80, and financials immediately recognized it. Depreciation, we have makers versus straight line. The financials will typically use slow, straight line depreciation. While on the tax return, you'll use makers, modified, accelerated, cost recovery system. So it's going a lot faster. They'll agree on ultimately the total amount. It's just the timing of it creates an M1 adjustment. Charity, the entire amount that you have given away is an expense on the financials. On the tax return, it's limited to 10% of letter A income. That's income minus all the expenses, excluding the charity and excluding a dividend received deduction. And then you calculate 10%. If you have more than 10%, you have a carryover, and then you're subject to limitations on it in the subsequent years. So you may not lose it, you're just not allowed to use it in the current year, there is a carryover. And we have startup expenses. On the financials, you immediately expense all of them, while on the tax return, the first 5,000 is immediately deductible. The excess is amortized over 180 months, which just happens to be 15 years. And remember, gang, one of the most important things for you to recall is look at the months. If they're gonna ask you one of these questions, they're always gonna say something like, you started the company in July. So hence, it's not gonna be 1 15th, one out of 15 years. It's gonna be six out of 180, six months out of the 180. 
So the difference between the full expensing on the financials and the allowable amount for tax returns causes a temporary difference, which will also appear as an M1 adjustment. And then finally, we have bad debts. The f- you are allowed to estimate the amount of bad debts for your financials. So you can take a debit bad debt expense and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts. On the tax return, you're only allowed to deduct the amount you actually wrote off. You're not allowed to estimate the amount. It's only the allowable amount written off. So in theory, they will eventually agree, but there will be a difference, a temporary timing difference that will create an M1 adjustment. And with that, I hope that helps understand some of the more common items that they'll test you on so you're ready to try an exercise and crush the exam.